All right, so these next few videos will focus on adding user input into the game. Um, we will do the keyboard and the gamepad. We will not be doing vibrations for some reason with the controllers that we have. I have not yet figured out how to get the vibrations to actually work. Um, we've tried to use it in the past, but it hasn't actually worked. If you want to explore it on your own, you're more than welcome to. But we're going to focus on how to add in the gamepad, how to add in the keyboard, and then we're going to focus on how to end the game automatically as well. All right, so this video in particular is going to focus on the gamepad. So we're going to focus on how on earth we save the settings of the gamepad, how do we then access the settings of the gamepad, so that we can use them within conditionals of our own program. So first, before we start, we have to know how to actually read the gamepad and what's happening, because if we can't read the gamepad, we can't actually access all of the settings of what is taking place with the gamepad ex at that exact moment in time. So there is something called the gamepad class. And what the gamepad class does is it provides a connection between our program and the gamepad. And it gives us a special way to actually read the controller. So we can access the values of different buttons, whether they're pressed or released. We can also access the position of a joystick to be able to tell, you know, how far it's pressed to the right, left, up, or down. And we can also look at the D-pads and how far that button has been pressed. So the gamepad class is how we have that connection and how we can actually access all of the different controls on the gamepad and what is taking place with those controls at that exact period in time. So within the gamepad class, there is this method called get state. So this is a method that's already been created and it gets the state of your gamepad and it takes in one parameter, which is your player number. So when you use this particular method, you will use the gamepad class dot the get state method and you will send in the player that you want to look at. So essentially what this method does is it takes this player number and it looks at that gamepad. And then once it's looked at the gamepad, it looks at all of the buttons, it looks at the position of all the joysticks and the D-pads and the triggers on the back. And then it will take those settings and it will send back the state of all of the controls on the gamepad back to the user and then essentially what we can do with those is we can save those values or we can use those values. So we are going to use the get state method a lot to continuously be updating our program and the state of all of those different buttons and joysticks and triggers of the gamepad. So essentially what we need to do is once we call the get state method we need to save all of these values in an object. Once we get them, that's great, but we need to actually take the time to save them somewhere. So that's the next slide we're going to look at and the next piece of code that you'll need to know. I would suggest taking notes on this piece so that you know exactly what is happening when you type in this next line of code. So this line here is generally how students save the state of the gamepad. So what happens is we create this object called a gamepad state object. So we're creating this object. Now you can give it any name you want. It doesn't matter what you name it. I tend to be consistent and say this is pad 1, this is pad 2, this is pad 3. But essentially what we are doing is we are creating a gamepad state object that will hold the state of all the values. So it will hold if the B button is pressed or released, if the A button is pressed or released. Essentially what this object will do is it will save those settings. It will hold those settings. And then we set that, that gamepad state object called pad1 equal to the settings of the current gamepad. So this whole line of code is going to get the settings of the gamepad. Essentially what we do is we go into the gamepad class. We then access the get state method. We send in the player index that we want. So you're sending in, okay, I want player index.1, player index.2, player index.3. And this method right here that has been underlined in red, what it will do is it will get the state of all those buttons and it will save those values inside pad 1 so we can access them. So you need to know what this line of code actually does because I will ask you, don't just memorize it, make sure you understand it. 
you're creating a gamepad state object to hold the state of all the buttons so that you can use them. And to get those states saved inside of that gamepad state object, you go into the gamepad class, you get the state of the player index that you want, you get the state of that gamepad, and you save all of those values in pad one so they can then be accessed and used in your game. All right, so this is an example of where this line of code will go in your program. So generally students like to put it right away at the beginning, but what you'll notice is that this is done inside of the update method. So I want you to think for a second why this needs to be inside of the update method. Why would we put that there? Why wouldn't it go at the beginning of our program? So take a minute, think about it, and then move on to the next slide. So the reason that line of code needs to be an update is because we need to constantly be reloading the settings. A game really wouldn't be any fun if it only updated the settings at the beginning of your program. You want those settings to be constantly updating as the user changes their input. So we need to call get state every time update runs which is 60 times per second. So by putting that line of code into update, we are essentially changing and updating our settings of our gamepad every 60th of a second, which makes our game feel very much like it is being played in real time. So this is just a little list of some of the things that the gamepad state object will hold, but each gamepad state object, which is when we're creating that object that's like our pad one, we'll hold the state of each button. And so we're gonna focus on the buttons now. We'll focus on the joystick and other items in later lessons. Today we're just gonna focus on the buttons. And essentially every button is either button state dot pressed or button state dot release. So it's one of the two. The A button, which is green, is either being pressed or released. The B button, which is red, is either being pressed or released. And so essentially what we will do is we will then be able to use this knowledge to drive the rest of our program. If a button is pressed, we'll want it to do one thing, and if a button is released, we'll want it to do another. All right, as I stated earlier, once we have that gamepad information saved inside of a gamepad state object, we want to use this info to then essentially respond based on what's happening. So we'll use conditionals, or we'll use those if, else, if, else statements to basically make our game do something based on whether a button is being pressed or released. So you'll check to see if a button is pressed or if you want it to respond when a button is released, you can do that as well. So here's an example of what that code will look like. You'll notice that I'm accessing what's happening with the button. So you can see I'm going to pad one. That's the pad I want to check. Then I'm looking at the buttons and specifically looking at the B button. And what I'm telling this program to do is go look at the first gamepad where I've saved the settings for the first gamepad, look at its buttons and specifically look at the B button. And if that B button is equal to pressed, if that's happening, then run this code. If it's released, don't do anything, but if it's being pressed, I want this to actually happen. So now that you've got an idea of how that gamepad and gamepad state classes work together to help you save the settings of the gamepad, what I'd like you to do is you're going to move on to the next video, and the next video is actually going to have you go into Mono Game with me so that you can then actually add in the gamepad code. So this would be a really good time to get up and grab a controller or to borrow one from someone who's sitting near you so that you'll be able to do this program with me.